the keys to effective communication of assessment results, either in the formative column or the assessment for learning column, is that is that we 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 deliver feedback to the students that uh, that uh, I'm sorry deliver achieve uh, results uh, in terms that decide their budget in ways that reveal to students how to do better the next time. And then we provide next times as they grow, continuing to provide that kind of helpful instructional coaching feedback. Point four works really well for me there. Guided practice with descriptive feedback. So kids can watch themselves grow during their learning. That's formative, that's supporting learning. In a summative context, the result is to describe the sufficiency of student learning in relation to preset standards. What that means is which standards have they or have they not mastered? That's what we must communicate to the decision makers. If we're assigning grades, they have to link back to standards mastered or not mastered. Otherwise, they're useless communication. Because out of summative, we can also help instruction. In this case, then, very simple key to success number four is communicate assessment results in a timely and an understandable manner, checking with the recipient to ensure that they understood it. It was the last time we did that with annual test scores. Sometimes they're hard to understand anyway. So that's key to success number four. That adds to the list that might to meet user needs. What? Clear targets, how quality assessments with results shared in a manner that fits the context of the communication. Now, I have to check my time because this is all in a sense prologue for what I want to talk to you next about next. And it is the oh joy of my career to have been able to spend a lot of time on this next idea. The key to at the fifth key to success, it's a verb, student success, they promote it. And I want to talk to you about that in some very specific terms. And there are dimensions of the assessment environment that we have typical emotional dynamics of being. Evaluated, assessed from the student's point of view. Student again, back in your days in school, you see what I mean here. Remember society's directives. Never the guess. Reduce the dropout rate. Universal graduation. Everybody ready for college and workplace training. Look everybody and try to correct excellence. If we got kids giving up in hopelessness, then forget about all of this. Because that ain't going to happen. The revolutionary insight on this context, maybe not, is that these things can't be achieved by hitting struggling learners between the eyes with a bigger baseball bat. If they're on the verge of giving up on themselves, hitting them between the eyes like that is exactly the wrong thing to do because it'll simply throw them over the edge. The relative reality that students' emotional reaction to assessment results, no matter what they are, high range or low, those results. It turns out that balance is critical. You all understand, right? Who's in charge of the learning and isn't you? It's the learner that's in charge of the learning. We're merely coaches. We're guides. If the, if the student isn't doing the learning, there isn't any learning happening. A student responds in terms to assessment results. Again, we regardless of where they are in the learning or what is productively. Now dig this. That's an expression of the 60s for those of you who are younger. Um, they respond productively when we have brought them to a place 
where upon seeing those results, they are able to say to themselves, I get it. I know what these results mean in terms of my learning. I know what to do next. I can handle this. Now, the fourth bullet is just critical. Therefore, they conclude, I choose to keep trying. Do you see how the critical is not yet? And they can be in this place, the probability of their success and therefore our success pretty high because a counterproductive response leaves the student saying, I don't know what this means. I have no idea what to do about it. I'm too darn dumb to learn this stuff anyway. I quit. Do you see if there's a critical standard that's really important for this munchkin and they're in this place, there's trouble, and it isn't just trouble for them, it's trouble for us because we're not doing the job that we've been hired to do. The question we must ask ourselves is, what can we do to help them? Here's another version of the revolutionary reality. What students think about and do with assessment results is at least as important as what we adults think about and do with those results. This is the partnership that we've been missing. We've been operating on the assumption if you just get the right test results into the right hands at the right time to the right adult, they'll make the decisions that'll make schools work. That's not unimportant. Of course it's important. We got to do our job well, but it leaves half of the decision makers out of the equation. Students get to make database and instructional decisions first about learning, and it turns out they get to go first. When they see whatever results we give them, they're saying something to themselves. For struggling learners, it can be something like this. Can I learn this, or am I just going to slow it? You see, my point is, if they got on side of that, it doesn't matter what you decide. Or... Is learning this worth the energy that I must expend to gain it? Or what about the, the, the really struggling learner who's asking, is trying to learn this worth the risk that I might fail again in public? Because that just hurts too damn much. They're not to try, them, and they drop out. You see my point? How can we help our students make the right decisions in this context? The decisions that will lead to productive learning for them, they got to be a part of it. And, and, and it turns out that over the last 20 years, a team of us working around the world on this problem have, have been able to develop principles of assessment for learning. I mean, one of whom is my colleague, Jan Shapui, who's written a book called Seven Strategies of Assessment for Learning. Um, and, 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 and in it, she taps into wisdom that came to us from around the world, Australia, New Zealand, where what we need to do from a student self-assessment point of view is keeping them aware of answers to three critical questions. Always and continuously an answer. Where am I going? Where am I now? Illusion to where I'm going, and how can I close the gap between those two? Notice where the locus of control resides in that question. Now, it turns out that uh, that Jan has identified a series of very specific strategies. For example, provide clear learning targets to students from the beginning of learning, along with examples. To help them know where they are now, things I said to you before are going to become relevant. Provide a regular access to descriptive feedback so I know where I am now in relation to where I want to be. And then teach students the skills of self-assessment so they can generate, begin over time to generate their own feedback and begin to partner with their teachers to understand and set goals for what comes next in their learning. And then to help them close the gap, we, we need uh, uh, to design lessons focused on specific attributes of success, teach students to revise their work in terms of those keys to success, and engage students in ongoing self-reflection about their own growth, 
giving them the opportunity to keep track of and share with their other with others the, the learning that they're that are growing over time. There's much more to say about this, but what what this has the effect of doing is bringing students while they're learning into the self-assessment process in terms of the assessments we reach for them. And once again, I say to you, we have compelling evidence, quite literally from around the world, of profound achievement score gains that come when students are engaged in the classroom level of assessment in these terms. So key to success five, but I wrote huge in place of number five, is keep every test is within reach if they keep striving for it. Be sure they have faith in themselves. It turns out to be critically, critically important. So these then are our keys. Balance purposes, meet all user needs. Clear and appropriate targets to win us. Commit to quality assessment throughout the assessment system. Communicate results effectively as a function of the context, formative or summative. And motivate students with success, not with anxiety and intimidation. I submit to you, this is a whole new world when it comes to assessment. I, I submit to you that we know an awful lot about how to make these things work. Now what we need is the opportunity for everybody to build local systems that do this out of a foundation of assessment literacy from the leadership at the building level, the district level, and through leadership at the classroom level. We know how to do this. We need the opportunity. And and and, and we've, we've designed a whole bunch of things that can help. And so, uh,